Good morning and welcome back to the vlog. It's great to have you here. And let me tell you what this video is all about today. It's currently 20 past 5 in the morning, still dark out. And I want to take you to my favorite sunrise location right here in the heart of Zurich, and that's the Lindenhof. Um, I was just walking past there the other day, not photography minded at all. And I saw a few cool photo um, ideas that I'd never even thought of, despite this being my favorite f uh, sunrise spot, and I've been there many, many times before. I'm actually excited to try out some new photos I've never done, and I can't wait to take you there with me and show you what that's all about. We made it to the old town of Zurich, right here in the city center, and Blue hours looking lovely at the moment, so I can't wait to get the camera out and show you some beautiful uh, photo spots just around here. And the place we're headed is Lindenhof, and that's just at the top of this hill. It being at the top of the hill obviously makes for an amazing viewpoint, and there's some stunning views all over the city, so I can't wait to show those with you guys. And this being a photography minor vlog, I thought it just seemed fitting to um, film a little scene outside the Leica shop. And every time I'm walking past here, I'm always tempted. I'm like, oh shit, maybe one day I'll be the owner of one of these cameras. I thought me being quite technically minded when it comes to photography, I really do care about the specs of the camera, more than what it looks like as a fashion accessory. So I don't think this is the right camera for me, but um, yeah, I don't know. Every time I walk past here, obviously, the, my interest does tingle a little bit and I'd love to take a little look, but that's a story for another day. We're on a sunrise mission and let's see where, where that takes us. Finally made it to the Lindenhof and I hope I haven't promised too much. But this truly is my favorite photo location when it comes to sunrises right here in Zurich. And let me tell you a little bit about this place. So it's a park at the top of the hill. And then back here you've got this incredible viewpoint overlooking the city of Zurich. What few people know about Zurich is actually that it was founded by Romans. And this is an old Roman fort actually, so it was built thousands of years ago and naturally in order to defend the city they built the fort at the top of the hill overlooking the whole city. And yeah, we're not trying to fight off barbarians today, we're just here to get some good photos. And yeah, the Romans wanted this to have a good lookout and f shoot some bows and arrows. We're going to be shooting some photos and let's do this. So for the first photo today, I chose a 25mm uh, Zeiss Batis lens and let me tell you why I opted for this lens. No, the truth is, the only reason I'm using the 25mm lens right now is because it happened to be the lens that was still on the camera when I took it out of the camera bag, but I was feeling a bit lazy so I thought, let's just start off this and then afterwards we'll pick the lens that I really truly wanted to use and that brings me right to my next point. When you come to this photo location, you're very tempted to gravitate towards the wide-angle lens, which is what a lot of landscape photographers use as their most used lens, and it's easy to understand why. You've got this beautiful view, sweeping views over the whole of Zurich, and in order to fit in as much as possible, of course, the wide-angle lens is an obvious choice, right? 25 millimeters is a perfect choice, um, great wide field of view, and you can fit a lot in there, and that's what I've done all these many times I've come here for sunrise. But now today I thought I'd really wanted to try something different and I've brought my other lens. And that's this lens right here, my 85mm prime lens. And the reason why I wanted to bring this specific lens along is because most people will tell you this is a portrait lens. Do not use it for landscape photography, but I'm here to use exactly that as a challenge and just to mix it up a bit. Instead of always relying on the wide angle lens, let's grab this telephoto, wide, this telephoto prime lens, 85mm, which is obviously feels a lot more zoomed in. And let's pick out some finer details in the cityscapes and use that as compositions, which makes for a very different feel to what you're used to seeing from this location, which is, of course, wide-angle shots. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to mount this on the camera. And then let's see what details we can pick out in the skyline. Can't wait. first composition I wanted to pick out the Grossminster Cathedral which is this one all the way back here and just really pick on details get a little bit of a close-up shot of this uh, beautiful church back here and in the background you can see some hues coming through on the sunrise on the sky now the other benefit of using the telephoto lens as opposed to using a wide-angle lens is if you're using a wide-angle lens 
you can have all this blue in the sky but if you're using a telephoto lens you can pick out just these sunrise hues down here and have um, them a lot more prominent in your shot so that turned out really great and 85mm lenses in general are just beautiful they tend to be extremely sharp have extremely beautiful rendering and nice micro contrasts use some uh, lame photography jargon in there and that really just helps you to pick out finer details in buildings and um, the Grossminster Cathedral, if I can find it, there it is is um, not shy of these beautiful features and it would be a shame not to photograph this as well so I was able to um, really focus in on the finer details in the um, sides of the buildings and yeah just uh, really highlight the architecture that this cathedral has to offer so without further ado let's go take a look at this photo I gravitate towards this ledge here and the benches which is just here which is just an obvious spot right you can put your bag down there you can sit like this couple over here put your camera on the ledge and you can get some amazing photos with the wide angle lens but now today I thought I'd try something different like I said and I actually saw this wall the other day and thought it'd be a cool idea to just peek over the wall and see what you can see and um, I actually found some beautiful compositions just there and I decided to pop my camera on the tabletop tripod pop it on the top of the wall and pick up some final details and I thought uh, just back here somewhere I can't find it now ah, back here is the university ETH in Zurich and um, it's got a beautiful church tower in front of it as well and just with the 85mm lens again just to pick up some final details in the buildings also it makes for some really stunning sh photos as well so let me talk you through the technicalities of the shot tabletop tripod 85mm lens is still the one I'm choosing and I also opted for a medium graduated filter reason being, you can tell now the sky is much brighter than the foreground so the filter being dark at the top just helps me control these highlights and the, the filters uh, see through at the bottom so um, the darker part of the photo stays clearer or clearer from the filter and the darker part is for the sky and then also I'm using a remote shutter release which is just always useful when using finicky tripods like this you don't want to be pushing the camera down which then makes the lens unstable especially when you're using such a small tripod with such a heavy lens it's easy to get shaken there so I always opt for the remote so that's the camera setup and here's the final photo and then the other thing that caught my eye was these branches right here because they were really close to the composition you got the uh, university building and the church back here, which I photographed in the last photo. And then the camera's here, right? So I thought these branches are almost sticking into the frame, so why not stick them into the frame on purpose, which creates an artistic effect where you can use the leaves as the foreground just to create a bit of a, a different dynamic edge to your photo. And yeah, the important thing to bear in mind when taking these kind of photos where you have a, a foreground that's very prominent and the background is first to think about what is your subject truly and for me the subject is definitely in these buildings back here so I kept those in focus but then I started playing around with the aperture using some wider apertures of course um, made these tree, uh, tree leaves a lot more blurry and if you use some tighter apertures on the other hand you got a lot more details and sharpness um, in the leaves in the foreground so you got to play around with that and figure out which uh, aperture setting works best for you. I liked something in between in the end. I think I opted for f5.6. That was a good medium ground between not complete green blurry mess but uh, still keeping the leaves slightly out of focus to not distract and to keep your attention on the buildings. So that's the thought process but I'd love to hear from you which one of the um, different aperture settings did you find the most pleasing. Let me know in the comments below. For the final photo of the day, I couldn't resist but gravitating right back towards the wide angle lens and ditched the 85mm lens in the end after all. And the reason being is the following. I just saw the sun was starting to peak over the hill here and uh, I opted for the Nisi wide angle lens, 15mm. And the reason why I wanted to really grab the wide, this specific wide angle lens as the sun was peaking over the hill is because this specific lens has straight aperture blades which means it makes for some incredible sun stars and that's just the perfect uh, 
kind of conditions for creating that effect. You do want the sun just on the edge of the hill, as it is right now. And with that in mind, um, you want to set your lens to like a medium to tight aperture. Something between like f9 or f11. If you're feeling a little crazy, even adventurous, go for f16. But I generally choose f9 or f11 or so. And then uh, you can really get that um, sunburst effect on the edge of the horizon. And I think that's a really pleasing, beautiful effect. And um, whenever I try to shoot sunrises, I just try to wait for that moment. Get the photo and call it the day. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's go take a look at this photo. I hope I haven't promised too much. I personally think that was a morning worth waking up for. And yeah, the Lindenhof, um, I think it's just an amazing place. I mean, even if you want to come here for uh, some sunset drinks in the evening or just to enjoy the view, chill out without a camera even, it's just an amazing place if you're ever here in Zurich and um, if you want to wake up early and grab some sunrise shots, even better because you're in for a treat. And yeah, I hope I haven't promised too much. I hope you enjoyed the photos. I hope you learned something and then if you've got some photography tips on sunrise you want to share, I'd love to read all about them in the comments. But for now, I need to call it a day. It's actually a work day and I need to uh, head back to my desk and get cracking on some uh, real work that pays the bills, not photography. But I uh, uh, appreciated you joining me on this journey and I can't wait to share a future one with you. If you're interested in seeing more videos just like this, why not consider subscribing? Hitting the button is free after all. And I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>